The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 873 7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Sounding bad, folks. I'm okay. Just have a little 26 frogs in my throat, but they're leaving one at a time, so we'll be fine. The first chart that I posted today is the FTSE Daily. Here's an ABCD pattern, and it started to work. If you're in that, and I don't think very many people here in the U.S. are, but I know some of our friends across the pond are, make sure you put your stop at uh, break even or just above those highs, because if it reverses, it can go a very long way. Now, if we take a look at the next one that we want to look at, and that is this FTSE on a 15-minute chart, you'll see that the, the move from that level was actually uh, pretty substantial. And uh, we've broken down, you know, below the lows we made last Friday, which is a relatively important part because that makes that a weekly reversal on that FTSE. So whether that means anything long-term, I don't know. The next one we're going to look at, of course, is our friend the DAX. And you'll see here that, like us, we are under a little bit of a pressure this morning, just a little bit of chances for people to buy at lower prices. But, but you'll notice that we're coming down. We hit the 61% retracement in the DAX, and we have that AB. CD there. The problem is, folks, this is the last day of the year, and uh, this is the uh, time when uh, the liquidity is a little sparse, to say the least, because most people start celebrating early in the morning. But uh, the markets are open all day today, I believe, just because of uh, year-end uh, things that they have to do, I guess. But I'm not absolutely sure if the stock market, I know the commodity markets are open, but I don't know if the stock markets are open all day today. Uh, they will be open on Thursday and Friday. I'll be here on Thursday and Friday with you folks, so we'll we'll have our show going at that time. We've got a couple of important things uh, to talk about. Um, let's uh, let's move over here and, and talk about this. Uh, for the first one that looks really interesting today, folks, is the uh, Australian dollar. I want to bring this up because it's got a really nice pattern, and uh, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's like anything else. You're going to see uh, <clears throat> tremendous harmony here. Going back to August, you'll notice that the lows we made in August and September and October all around the first of the month. Um, then we had the high on the first of the month, on the fourth, excuse me, the second of November. But the thing to look at here is you look at the low that we made in between October and November, and if you shifted that over, you'll see that we're over a potential high here somewhere in this uh, uh, Australian dollar because we've got double ABCD patterns up here at the 70-20 uh, level. So it's going to be interesting. And here we are at the end of the year. And as I've said lot, lots of times, there's going to be really significant stuff happening around the first of the year in the foreign exchange markets. Uh, why that, if that has anything to do with planning, I don't know. But as I recall from memory, that there was quite a bit of uh, stuff going on like that. But that's a really nice uh, multiple ABCD pattern. And I would wait for some type of reversal to uh, possibly short the Australian dollar. Here again, we have a situation in the Australian dollar, much like we have in the Hong Kong stock market, <clears throat> and that is the reaction to news. I don't know if you folks have been watching the news or not, but Australia is burning down. I mean, if you take a look at it, it really is uh, amazing uh, to see how much fire is over there. Yesterday, there were some people trapped in a little town called, I forget more, I forget the name of it. It's one of those strange names. But uh, it was so bad that people had to go actually go out into the water. And it was really, uh, really quite uh, troubling. We saw some news uh, things on it, and it was uh, very, very scary. Here again, you know, we're in the end of the year. 
And uh, I've always tried to try to help some people that need help during the holidays, folks. For people that don't have anything and no place to eat and no place to live and no place to eat, <laughs> holidays really suck. It's bad the 360 days of the year, but during the holiday season, it's even worse because they're seeing all these people with their fancy cars and fancy presents and stuff, and here they have nothing. So try to help folks that don't have anything. Uh, another market that is reacting uh, against the news, and that is the uh, the Hong Kong market, and that is the Hang Seng. If you remember, I think I posted that. Uh, I, I believe I did. Let me, let me. Uh, I think I did. Let me double check. I hope I did. Maybe I did it. I don't know. No, I did not. I thought I thought I posted it. I sent the I spent a, sent an ounce video on it on uh, yeah, uh, day before yesterday to start the new year over in Hong Kong to our friends over there. And uh, if that market it was supposed to look like it was ready to roll over, and all of a sudden he had a big move up to the upside in the Hang Seng, and we took out that 28,000 level that was a key level. Now, whether that's a false breakout or not, you know, I really don't know. The big things that are happening today, folks, in the markets are not related to, well, it could be related to stocks because we've had some type of a two-day sell-off. I know it's hard to believe. In fact, the people at the financial presses are even having a hard time handling this because the NASDAQ had been up 11 days in a row. They can't imagine that it could be down a day, but it's not unusual for the market to be up 11 days in a row and then have a day sell off before it rallies again another a few days. We have a chart here from our friend uh, Mr. Dennis Gartman, who's writing his last letter today as we speak. And as we get ready to take a look at this, I want to post the chart that I think is one of the more important ones in his uh, letter this week, and that is uh, the, uh, you'll notice here that the uh, valuation here and the, the, the PEG ratio, the PE ratio you see is way up here at this level here, and this is the highest level we've been at, wow, folks, ever. And if you, if you look at that, that's a, that's a three drive to a top pattern in the, uh, in the earnings. So I don't know if that means anything, but if you like patterns, maybe it's something that uh, you ought to pay attention to. I'm not really sure, but that's the way it looks like. Folks, if you ever had an idea about calling Calling in to this show, today would be the day to do it because I'll tell you what, oh, my, my good buddy Burrow and I, my friendly Burrow here, Walter, is we are under a little bit of uh, uh, this, the what we call the uh, the, the flu-like season, and so any tra trends that you, <laughs> any things that you'd like to discuss would be really great. Uh, the euro, folks, uh, we, we have, well, let's start with the U.S. dollar, because that's where it all begins, and then we'll look from there. We talked about this U.S. dollar over and over again. We want to look at it now, because we have now exceeded what we thought could possibly happen. This is one of the things that we focused on the newsletter this week is the fact that this was a strong probability that this was going to happen because you'll notice after the we, we just made point D we, we completed point D today uh, we're a little bit below the uh, uh, six the 78 percent level we're near that 1.618 expansion but the ABCD takes us down to that 95 level folks if we ever take out that 95 level with gusto and close below 95.20 uh, in that U.S. dollar index, uh, the, the U.S. dollar is going to be in some serious trouble uh, because we, we haven't done this. We're going to do this in the next few days is to look at the long-term weekly in this. But if you'll remember, that 99 level up there at point A, okay, that was a 618. We'll be right back. <clears throat> If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, uh, this is the uh, show of TFNN. <laughs> Mr. Z, are you on the phone? I am, sir. Good day I, to you. I, I need help today, Bubba. <laughs> well, I, well um, I feel like something that the cat drug in and he left it outside. So what can I help you with, my friend? Uh, ask and uh, ye shall receive, Larry. We're going to do that for you. Great. Say, so, um, I, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, talk over with you a couple of markets. Okay. Uh, first, I thought I'd... Um, uh, I'd have to pat you on the shoulder for saying, hey, this is just obvious. This Apple pattern and uh, price levels warrant uh, consideration for a turning point short-term high. Anyway, up at that 290, 294 level. And um, how interesting that that would occur on uh, Friday one day removed from the um, the lunar cycle, that would have been the full, excuse me, the new moon, which was also a southern hemisphere solar eclipse date. So we've backed off, you know, just mildly, nothing, nothing mm -hmm. big. Um, uh, so I, I pat you on the shoulder for that. Uh, I've also just displayed on Tiger, excuse me, in the Tiger's Den, a uh, a, a reprint of something that you and Tim Boast um, uh, discussed back on December 19th, namely his, and I'm just quoting from what I'm reading here, his astrocycle projections, um, where, let's see, his point B was uh, the 26th of December solar eclipse uh, slash new moon. 
and that looks like we've got a uh, at least a short-term high on that uh, S&P futures up there at that 3254. My question for you is, would it be your expectation, given that we've come off oh, 40 points from that high, 40 S&P points rather, that we likely uh, slip down into that January 10th full moon and lunar eclipse that Tim Boast had highlighted? I think so, John. The reason for that is, is that yesterday's low was a perfect uh, 382 retracement of the low of December the 13th. And so once we've broken that, which we've done this morning, and yesterday's rally was only a 382 rally off of the, just a slightly above it, of course, about 0.44. But uh, we've broken down below that. That sets up an ABCD structure 40 points lower than the high we made yesterday on an intermediate high at 52.35. That would take you down to 51.80 would be that number that would be the ABCD on that. But you remember, this is only two days removed from the high. So, you know, these things could reverse at any moment, but that's what it looks, that's what it's looking at right now. Thanks on that. Could I ask you yeah. to kindly post that uh, yeah. that uh, uh, chart that you're speaking uh, about on uh, Tiger uh, TV, please? Uh, you know what? I don't think I have it here, but I can bring it up here uh, in the next uh, oh few minutes, possibly. Uh, I, I posted it yesterday uh, for myself, of course, but I can't refine it. But as you keep talking, John, let's uh, let's take a quick look here at the uh, as we get ready because time is short here on these uh, things. But let's let's take a look at the March wheat because you you asked to talk about March wheat. Now I only do I only do Chicago wheat. I don't do uh, Kansas City. So yeah, let the, me, let, me just, uh, let me just mention something right there for you. Okay. Before you go into Chicago wheat versus Kansas okay. City, the price levels okay. are altogether different. Sure. I'll just uh, I'll just share something that I always just remind to my remind myself. I always find it helpful. Um, the Chicago wheat futures and its underlying crop that that is what they call soft red winter wheat. Um, that, as far as the United States wheat crop is concerned, that's the smallest crop uh, of the four that are the, the four big varieties that are grown in the country. Uh -huh. And uh, it just so happens, uh, maybe it's by just default or tradition, that that smallest wheat crop uh, happens to have the largest uh -huh. trading volume by speculators. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and so that's just a fact. Um, uh, the Kansas City contract, which is also now part of the Chicago Merck uh, complex, that is the largest uh, the largest crop in the country, and that's what they call hard red winter. Better for baking is what they tend to call it, and the volumes on that Kansas City. Futures uh, has been increasing in recent years vis-a-vis -vis the Chicago futures. But uh, that's, that uh, variety of wheat is trading a full oh, 70, 80, 90 cents lower than the Chicago. And that was because that spring, the, uh, the winter wheat crop up in, oh, it would be Missouri, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, that was plagued by excessive rain that killed off part of the crop. And so it, that particular crop, while small to begin with, was exceedingly small. And hence, the price of it being so much higher than Kansas City. Now, that will adjust as we go through the next crop years as farmers uh, uh, plant. Uh, but um, having said that, I like to trade markets where I can envision a fundamental reason that a market go up, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 percent. Chicago wheat, I can't see that happening. Kansas City, I can. And hence, I'm trading that Kansas City futures from the long side, as you know.
Okay. Uh, John, I was able to pull up the chart of that 15-minute S&P showing you the move I was referring to. We had that high at uh, 3254. We came down to 3218. We rallied up to 3232. Now, we've broken that low. That sets up an ABCD at uh, a 3197. So that uh, is not too far away. It's only 20 handles. So if it's moving 20, 30 handles a day, it doesn't take very long to get there. And uh, the 10th of uh, January is way out there when you're looking at a 15-minute chart. So we're probably going to have a whole lot of moves, you know, before we get to that point. If we make 31.97 today, uh, that tells you that something really big has happened because that means we're 60 handles off the top and you don't get that type of action without some serious selling coming in. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for posting that 15-minute uh, uh, E-mini S&P chart. Might I ask, uh, in this particular case, uh, we've rallied up to new record highs, and we're starting yes. to come off. Um, yes. And, of course, we don't know at this point whether or not this is a trading move lower uh, or conceivably a very important, conceivably major top forming. Uh, when we're coming off record highs like this as a short seller, um, can you um, share with us and your listeners uh, the, the kind of just the tactics you use? Do you uh, sure. uh, tend to scalp short term uh, or do you tend to hold saying maybe this is going to be a big, huge winner? <clears throat> well, we'll answer that when we get back from the break. Okay, John, can you stay with us? Thanks so much. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. Okay. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Mr. Z out of Philadelphia here at TFNNN, and we were talking about the E-mini S&P and the possibility, and we say with a great deal of uh, tongue-in-cheek, possibility of a big high up in here. The way we were following this is because we had that 32.54 uh, hit, we had a little bit of a pullback, and then we rallied back to a 32.44, 10 points below the high. At that point, I knew that the risk would only be 10 points, uh, $500. So we were willing to take a position there, uh, and not knowing whether it's going to be a high or not, because you know no one really knows for sure, and no one's ever going to tell if they do know. So at that point, we had a pretty big break. We got got down to the 32.20 yesterday, which means you'd made 24 points, which is a pretty good place uh, to uh, take the first profit. Uh, and that's what we did. And then uh, I'm just trying to walk through here, Mr. Z, what I'm looking at. Then yesterday, uh, we, we sold it again at 32.29, and we had a stop at um, 32.36. Uh, we were risking nine points on that one also. That one worked. And so all we're doing now is sort of following it down. Now, I know what you're. I know what you like to do, John, because you you like to put big positions on and add to them on the way up. But at this level here, uh, it, there's still a possibility this thing could go a lot higher. So I'm not, you know, even though I'm really, really bearish, I'm not interested in putting in a very large position. Some of the folks that that follow along with what I do, that I'm in contact with every day, have very large positions on up from that 3244 level that are working pretty good. But remember, John, back about two weeks ago when we were at 31, uh, 3115, uh, 3215, I really thought, you know, that was the, you know, 1.648 expansion and that was going to hold it and it went through it. And, you know, that was one of those that started really good and ended up, you know, a break even or with a slight loss because once they they keep exploding to the upside, you can't stand in front of it. So what I'm looking at now is the intraday action, especially being the last day of the year. But uh, there will be a time here in the next few days where you're going to get a really clear A, B, C, D pattern, uh, you know, maybe from the 131 to 95 level. And if you get that 382 pattern at the 38% level, that's the one you want to be watching because that is the one that uh, puts uh, a lot of meat and potatoes on the table. I hope that answers your question, my friend, but it's basically risk control. I don't like to take a lot of risk, and that's really what I'm uh, what I'm trying to do. That uh, uh, that thought process, just laying that out step by step, uh, is very helpful, and that's the sort of thing I was ask, uh, asking if you'd uh, share. So uh, I see the logic, I see the thinking, and in listening to that, it's uh, it's pretty clear to me, just as a listener, that if you hold um, a different view. Or it's not a different view. If you'd like to take a stab at something major, you can alter uh, your tactics uh, uh, using what you've just mentioned. So, so thanks so much on that. Um, uh, real helpful. Um, Good. Uh, I, I wanted to. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm stumbling here on account of many markets are moving. Uh, quite a bit here just as we speak. I um, wanted to ask you the follow-up, one that's moving quite a bit. Uh, we're down 30 cents off the 2 a.m. high, or maybe it was midnight, in silver. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you were looking at those charts the past day, maybe last night, uh, wondering if your thoughts – uh, might include the idea that this rally from what 1650, 1660 mm -hmm. up to 1820 is due for a significant rest. Uh, any thoughts on that, please? John, the only thing I, I watch the metals, gold, silver, platinum very closely, and gold. You know, once we broke below, broke above that. Uh, at 1520 level, you know, it said we were going to go higher. We got up to 1530, ran another $10. Silver had been lagging badly all the way. But the one that had had my most uh, attention here 
was the platinum because if you look at the platinum last night we made a perfect uh, a b c d uh, th uh, pattern also with a small three drive from uh, early november up there at the 980 at that point you know you had a really clear picture you didn't have that same clear picture uh, in the uh, uh, the gold or the silver, because they were already above their their key resistance levels. Uh, silver didn't go a lot above it, but, you know, gold certainly did. It went, you know, $10 above it. But the interesting thing this morning is during the last six days, we haven't had a correction more than 5 or $6, and we've already had that today in gold. So that's telling you that something big has happened, and that's probably being reflected in what's happening in the silver market. And that's a big move. And that's a, that's a, that's if 30 cents is equivalent to $15 in gold. So that's a that's a pretty significant one. Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, my yeah. uh, my thought exactly. Uh, very good. I will uh, close by asking if you'd share any current thoughts that you have on that March soybean contract. It's been rallying nicely, and I'm just wondering if there's mm -hmm. any pattern or fib combination you're looking at that might suggest. <laughs> A uh, 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 an end of a rally here or not? John, I just posted it. It's the March soybean, so we've been very bullish this uh, ever since it made that 61% retracement down there at that 890 level. We're up here at 952, which is the 78% level, and uh, we had a pre pretty strong day yesterday. I believe selling at 952 is not such a bad idea, especially if you're long, but if you want to take the short side of it, you only have to risk a nickel there, because if you see a 957 print, you're certainly going to be wrong, and you don't want to be standing there with a a hot kettle of uh, tea with no uh, thing to cover your hands. So you got to be careful there. Don't risk more than a nickel if you wanted to try it. But at 952, I think it's a very low risk short because of the 78% level and that ABCD pattern that extends up there also. So those are the main ones uh, to look at. However, if, if you had the two trades to do between the platinum and the March soybeans, the platinum is the much better trade. And the reason for that is you've got uh, three major patterns coming in there at that 980 level whereas this one you've only got two so you've got you know quite a bit more information when you're looking at these patterns because the more information you have you know the better you're prepared to uh you know to put the trades on that's what it looks like to me anyway excellent uh i uh, <laughs> have to uh, i'm just chuckling as you uh went through the uh, mark soybean chart i uh I was long and uh, booked again uh, about, uh, well, before the 8.45 New York a.m. time where we pause uh, looking at that same thing. So um, uh, you have taught me well, sir. Uh, I, uh, I know what to do when we get uh, declines or rallies in the FIB numbers. So, uh, so thanks so much for the, uh, the quick update and, more importantly, okay. all the teachings over the years. I do appreciate it. Well, I appreciate your teachings too. I was just by ready to tell the folks here, folks. This dude's got this. He's got the thing turned around. He's been teaching as much as I've been giving him. It's been a good mutual uh, uh, admiration, especially John. And you're very, very helpful to everybody in the Dan. We want to wish you and your family a uh, very, very happy New Year and successful 2000. 2020. Same to you. Thanks so much. Okay, folks. We'll be right back after the break. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay. okay, folks, we're back, and I believe we have a caller from Boston. Are you there, Boston? Hey, yo, Larry. Happy New Year. I just tell you, Happy New Year to you. Natural gas. Sure. Let's take a look at it. I just posted it into the room here. You'll be able to see the UNG. I believe we're going to get down to about 1620 is what we're looking at. We're trading around 1690. Uh, I'm watching 210 in the futures. That's been a very, very important level for time. So as long as the futures are rotating around 217 right now, I think we've got a chance to make a, a, a bottom in here. This is a seasonally a pretty good time for natural gas is the way I, I look at it. So I am, I am looking for a bottom in here. But if you're in the UNG, I believe we're going to hit 1625 here in the next uh, oh, uh, day or two would be my guess, maybe after the first of the year. But keep a close eye on that. Below 16, you don't want this thing. That's for sure. That would not be good. Yeah, but in the futures, you think this two two seventeen is about the bottom. Two ten, two ten in the futures is what I'm look I'm looking at for the futures is two ten. That's what I'm watching. Okay. We're trading at around two sixteen right now, so two ten is what I'm looking at in the futures. Futures and and this is a this is a holiday day really because of the fact that there's a lot of less liquidity. A lot of people are not not in, but uh, I'll be watching this thing really closely Thursday and Friday at that 210 level in the natural gas, because I think it does have potential uh, to rally from that level, but we'll have to wait to see if it gets there. Oh, oh great. Hey, listen, thanks for all, and have a happy does that new help? year. Does that... And a happy new year. Dear year to you, one of the most beautiful cities in our country, and I appreciate everything you guys do up there after you. Okay, we'll be right back. Folks, uh, I want to do one other thing. I love Boston because that's where Larry Bird played for many years, and we'll be able, be able to see. Okay, uh, we're having a little uh, quick in the S&P here early this morning. Uh, remember, folks, this has been a bull market for a long time, and the shorts are at.
absolutely scared to death. Everybody who's been short and is not scared to death, raise your hand. Whoops, my hand just jumped up. Anyway, uh, that's one thing that we want to keep in. Remember, folks, the, the key to this is what I just mentioned when, when John was on the line. And I, you know, I can't, you know, first of all, I can't be on hours a day, but, you know, I do share videos and stuff. But those are the ones that you really want to be watching, because if you get that ABCD structure, and this is a, it's a holiday day, actually, even though they say that it isn't, uh, it, it pretty much is, because there's a lot of people not there. In fact, uh, three of my four really good friends are not even in there. There, so it's just uh, by alone by myself. Anyway, uh, we'll watch that very closely. That's what I post at for the 24/7 uh, market, and we'll uh, look at that, folks. If you hear me slurring my words, it's because I am on two different medications. <laughs> One for my uh, my uh, flu that I have, well, cold, whatever it is. Another one is for the sore throat. So if I if I end up making a big goof all today, I'll try to uh, try to remember and get it up here. And uh, oh, we've got someone in the uh, audience here. I guess he was able to squeak through these busy phone lines that we have here at TFNN. Bob from Spokane, Washington, wants to talk about March corn. Is that correct, Bob? Yes. Good morning, Larry. I've been waiting for about Good. two and a half hours to speak with you. Here yeah, in I, I know. So it's it's tough. Morning. It's tough. <laughs> <laughs> but you're well God bless with it, you. so I uh, just keep holding until you answered. So, anyway, I've been trading the March corn uh, successfully here off and on, and I've just noticed this 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 kind of doldrums actually, and at, from 386 to the cap at 391, uh, I've had several several trades uh, of this and I just there's so much support at 386 I'm wondering after this crop report on the 10th of January are you seeing a chance for that corn to rally through four dollars maybe to four ten twenty oh oh it could easily it could easily do that because we have a really good bottom in there at around that 365 370 level Level the hedging pressure will be over uh, pretty soon here. Uh, so, uh, so by the first of next week, we got a lunar cycle coming in. I'd certainly be watching to buy it on any pullback. And uh, with the news, uh, supposedly they're going to sign this China deal today, which I think is a bunch of. But that's neither here nor there. But uh, the key, the key thing, key thing is you don't want to let that March corn go below 370 because if some, if it goes below 370, there's something serious. serious with the corn crop, even though we got a lot of corn, we can sell that. That's not a problem. If it goes below below that level, there's something wrong, and that's the main thing you want to remember in March corn is do not let that go below 370. That would be a uh, be a real negative sign. Stop and think here, Bob. We've been uh, rallying here now for almost two weeks. We went 370, so we rallied uh, 21 cents, which is not uh, not a, you know it's not small, but it's a pretty good rally right up to the 50 percent level. Uh, but if we go back below that, there's going to be something seriously wrong. But I really think corn's got a chance to go a lot higher. So I'm I want to I want to run that crop report to be a buyer. So that's what I that's what I plan on doing. Well, thank you very much for all your information, and I want to wish you a happy new year. And as always, uh, we just yeah. all look forward to you every morning uh, with your insight and wisdom and uh, trading these, <laughs> these charts. You have absolute most wonderful charts I've ever seen, so they're just very easy to interpret. Oh, well, and thank I you. just thank you for all, your, yep. all that you do. Yeah. Okay, thank you for emailing me your address, and I'll get that $20 out to you right after the first yeah. of the year. Okay. All right. Thanks, <laughs> hey, Bob, sir. happy holidays happy to you, year. my friend. You bet. You bet. Okay, folks, let's move on here. What we've got, we've got the S&P now is up on the day after being down about 10 points. Uh, Dow is up again, as usual. Uh, New York Composite is still up a little bit. Um, even Apple is uh, back up again at uh up about uh, 73 cents. Uh, if you're in the Apple, folks, uh, the stop is uh, 299 etched in stone. And hopefully it's not one of those tombstones, but uh, make sure it doesn't get above 299 because if it is, then it would be no good. I mean, it made, well, it, it you know dropped uh, $7, but then yesterday it quickly reversed. 
being the strongest stock in the world and got to be up on the day with the Dow being down 170 points. So maybe the top is not in in Apple, but then again, maybe it is. The keys to watch this, folks, is and this is where we're looking here. We posted this this yesterday here is this uh, euro. This is the one we want to watch. The euro, the Australian dollar, all of these are up into real curious. Now, we popped through here the 61% uh, retracement in the euro at uh, 120. We got up to 120.38. Uh, uh, so uh, that that's completing those ABCD patterns that are there. And as I've said several times, at the at the end of the year, uh, I don't know if it's because companies plan on hedging or something right after the first of the year, but we see some really, really weird moves in, in these currency markets during that time. So let's, uh, let's keep in mind that we want to be watching that. And we got to watch uh, the information that we got from our good friend uh, Bill Meridian yesterday on the fabulous show that he did showing the possibility of the stocks going down for 2020. This is from, this is from the man who's been bullish since Moses left the mount with the tablets. And, uh, you know, this is the first time he's been bearish since that time. So uh, you got to pay attention to that. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as our number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, I want to continue on what we were just uh, talking about uh, with uh, Mr. Z and then also our friend from Boston, which was about the natural gas and also so, oh, uh, Mr. Let's take a look here at natural gas. I meant. I mentioned 210, and the reason for that is, folks, you'll notice here on this particular pattern, a nice little butterfly at that point. Now, we are now taking out the lows from December here at 215. We've, we've just token, taken those out. So the next pattern that sits there, there is at this 210 level. But you have to go over to August. You see that low, that low in August over there at two dollars. If we go below that, that's not going to be very good. I think the all the all time low is around a buck ninety six. So we'll be watching this very very closely. It it forms nice patterns, and uh, they 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 work most of the time. Look at the beautiful A B C D pattern from August into remember uh, right up there. At two, there are two nine. That was uh, right at the 78% level on the daily, a perfect ABCD pattern, and now you've had a big move down. But seasonally, we should be getting ready, ready moving down. Uh, that uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what that we'll see what's happening with that. We'll we'll watch that very very closely for sure. Uh, by the way, I've got an announcement to make. This is my last my last show for the year, and it's going to be my last show for the decade. Believe it or not, can you believe the word? We're ready to hit 2020. That just seems hard to believe. Oh, my. I, I can't. It, it, you know, I'm just really lucky that uh, I've been able to do what I do. So, so that's great. Hey, thank you for all the nice things you folks have said to me, and uh, and most of the you know the stuff has been just really super. Get a or get a few few knocks here. But anyway, that's uh, the main thing is we're going to try to keep continuing on here through our good friends here at TFNN that give us all this great information. And I want to thank everybody at TF and all the guests, guests, and so it's been really super great. And and you guys have been great. It'd be helpful to you know have more call-ins, but that would be great. So we'll get that moving on into the early part of the year. We're going to have a great year for 2020, folks. These markets are going to be volatile. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.